Phil Jupiter's uh, here on Galway Bay FM as part of the Vodafone Comedy Carnival. Galway, boom! And uh, don't forget that you can listen back to these shows by downloading the podcast for free from the iTunes store. Simply search for Vodafone Comedy Carnival. Alternatively, you can watch video highlights of each show. That's And, and today's video highlight... Es muy caliente. Okay, uh, uh, it's spicy, yeah. you, can, uh, you can log on to it uh, at the festival website, VodafoneComedyCarnival.com. Um, joining myself and uh, der Uber Gruppenführer Kevin Healy is uh, young Andrew Maxwell. Wonderful to be here. It's wonderful uh, to be here. How, how are you doing, sir? Are you, how, uh, you, look, you look like a sack of crap. Thank you. <laughs> I feel like I've been hit, hit in the face by the Atlantic Ocean, <laughs> which is, and it was. It's a breezy night, but uh, uh, but uh, you're here, and that is that's the key thing. Uh, that is the key thing. That's the key thing, Max. How did your gig go last night? As you know, uh, me as a professional, uh, I went back to the uh, hotel and, and had a damn good night's sleep. I was in the, in the sack at ten. Well, that's how I feel about it as well. A little bit of Netflix, yeah, and then off to sleep. Yeah, it's all about preparation. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> You live, to prepare, you live the dream, fail. Andrew Maxwell. You live the, or should I say, nightmare? Well, out on the West Coast, they do. When you're out in the West, mm. you know, just yes, uh, apparent. just just generally uh, making small talk to the to the wee small hours. Yes, you were. Yes, you on were. a Wednesday. I know. I mean, there's I know. very few places that you can do that. Yeah, As, I mean, and you are a father to inspire us all that would do that sort of thing on a Wednesday, my friend. Go out. Now, like uh, there was a former justice minister. I was listening to you talking you about uh, Leonard Cohen before. Yes, that's right. Our former justice minister, uh, Dermot Ahern, ah, right. a massive Leonard Cohen fan. Really? Yeah. The man that was in charge of locking up junkies. Yeah. Was a massive uh, fan of Leonard Cohen. That's, 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 uh, that's, well, you know, you, but this, here's the thing, is, is your artists, and you are a living, breathing exemplar of that this morning, your artists are supposed to be vagabonds, are supposed to be troubled. They should have their uh, stuff in a knapsack. You would look great with a bindle. Can I just say, oh, if you no, yeah, actually yeah. arrived in Galway on foot... Stick... Have a sack. Yeah. Boom. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and and it would be great if you develop like like the uh, like the rambling folk in in the UK. Uh, they've got they've got chalk signs they would leave outside the, the houses to give whether the people inside are friendly, whether they give you a drink. Exactly. Well, I'd leave. Well, I'd I used to know all of the tramp chalk codes that you could exactly. leave on a gatepost. Who's this guy? What, what are we going to get it from? See, a brother wanderers. Would you make I, a good hobo, Andrew Maxwell? I'd make a terrible hobo, because I like having a, a regular sleep. I'm more of a house cat than a hobo. But, no, you see, here's the thing. I like, is I the like to have a regular sleep. Andrew I, I, Maxwell. I, I, had, I had a cheese from a, a tramp once. It was, it was a, a shepherd in the mountains of northern Portugal. Yeah. And he, had, he, had a ha he got his knapsack out. Yeah. Do you want some cheese? Obviously, in Portuguese. Yeah, yeah. So I was so enamoured by the whole, uh, you know, rustic setting of the situation. Yes, of course, I'll try some more cheese. Phil, it was the worst thing I've ever tasted. Honestly, <laughs> nothing's gone into my mouth worse than that. Like, just <laughs> horrific. But it was, I it, quite like it, but oh, that, I, I've always... No, but instantly my mouth died. Like, even now, like, I can still taste it in my mouth. It was horrific. Oh, things, and, and, and things are not as good as normality. Have you, I mean, there's a very, uh, apropos of that, the sort of the getting into that situation, where you're somewhere really authentic and you think, oh, I'll do what they do. Andy Smart was travelling uh, in uh, Greece when he was a young man and he, he, he was, he missed, he miscalculated the bus. He was in the middle of nowhere. It was starting to get cold at night. And then he found, there, there was this farmhouse yeah. and there was some, some, some people, that just, an old bloke outside and Andy was like, you know, how do I, in very patchy, Pigeon Greek managed to, and the bloke said, "There's no buses now. You, you're going to have to stay there. You, you can stay with us, you know." And and the bloke sort of said, "If you if you if you do help me with a job in the morning, you know, you can stay." And uh, and yeah, of course, I'd love to help you, sir. And so he stayed with his family, and this old Greek farmer gave him ouzo all night, and he drank about a pint Ooh. of very strong homemade ouzo. And, and he, we should and say so, he has a double white yeah, kidney. He's on a him big as well. lad, and he and he so he, he keels out at night, goes to sleep, goes to spark out. He's woken up at four o'clock after about an hour and a half skip by the bloke shaking him, got, saying, it's time for work, it's time for work. And, uh, and then they went out. Sounds familiar? <laughs> <laughs> they went out to the barn, whereupon the bloke started slitting baby goat's throats with oh. his knife and then skinning them. And that was the job that Andy, Have you ever the full hangover. Kid? Have you ever eaten kid? 
Let me just answer that with a question. What are you talking about? Kids, like baby goat, like the, the equivalent uh, of lamb I of goats. I haven't. Oh, Lord. Rusty, my, my kid's uh, grand, uh, Portuguese granddad, he took me to this uh, place just in a village. Everything's about in a village in Portugal. We went to this one village. He knew this dude. They were on a firm handshake levels, you know. Nice. Yeah, that sort of, ha, 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 look into each other's eyes and laughing while shaking hands. Went to this place. It was basically a dude's living room, but he'd been. Uh, he, he apparently his trick was he'd massage the kids before he killed them. But anyway, it was delicious. It was oh lord! It was like lamb, only lamb plus. Your powers have been, uh, honestly. You sir have just put Yates to shame. He, yeah. he uses you know words. I mean? Poetry. The poetry he uses words as his weapons. It was like lamb, lamb plus. <laughs> I'm having that. I dare say there's many a taverna across Ireland will be writing that one down right now. Ooh, <laughs> right, right. It's like lamb, but, you know, lamb, but is, lamb plus. Right well, lamb is the most delicious of meats. L uh, lamb. Well, it's because of the fat. And I speak as a man yeah, that knows his fat. Puppy fat. Oh. Lamb fat. Oh, it's so good. So but, delicious. But, but, but go, you know, kids, have you ever uh, have you ever had a, uh, a kid on your lap? We're well, talking about a kid goat. No, I kid, have not. Yeah, exactly, I have not. as in the gloves. The baby, yeah, 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 the baby yeah, yeah. goat, yeah? yeah? Have you ever had one? No, I haven't. Gamble around on no, your no, lap? No, no, no. Do they frolic? Oh, so lovely. Look tiny at you, little look at you. Tiny They frolic, hooves. they're lovely, and then he and eats then he them. them. What <laughs> are you like? You're all over the shop this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, well, this is The Clash. Boom. Go, Jace. Hey, joining us now, it is a joy, an undiluted joy to welcome Mr. Glenn Wall to the hexagonal table of... Hello. Hexagonal. How are you, my friend? I'm wonderful. I'm in Galway, so you how could I be anything indeed. other than beautiful? Is, it, is, is this, a, a Glenn, is your year, is this one of the shining gems in the tiara that is the Glenn Wall year? Yes, very much so. I get to come back and see Kevin and see how he's attempting to kill me this year. It's interesting, really, isn't it, that he is some kind of de facto uh, comedian assassin? Yeah. Oh, he tries. He tries, but he's never got me. I'm, uh, it's like spy versus spy, but with booze. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my word. And uh, Maxwell is still at the table, for those of you that are wondering what that wheezing is. Hey, I'm ready. I'm here. <laughs> if <laughs> some conversation comes my way, I'm ready to get involved. He looks like he's going to remember this part, so oh, that's uh, that's that's new. He's, yeah, he's finally got I'm he's ready. finally got full consciousness. <laughs> we uh, and that's I'm what we were so talking earlier about, about fully awake about the fact. On, on this hey, eyes to me, chaps. Eyes to me. Uh, you were going to discuss uh, ha Halloween. Now it's, uh, we're approaching that. It's a, it's a key time. Is Halloween a big deal in Canada? Uh, uh, look, uh, oh yeah, Glenn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Probably, well, they, they've got bigger fish to fry right now. But, <laughs> you know, it's, oh, geez, what costumes are we going to... Oh, let's find the guys first, and then yeah, we'll think about it. Guys, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's, it's, a, a, it's a, one of the big holidays... Uh, you never know, really, because um, uh, Halloween in the UK has kind of started spiralling on from... We've adopted the the American template. The trick or treating started. Well, that's what I we learned. never used to. This is what I learned. Uh, I made a show for Radio Four Extra about the history of Halloween, yes. which will go out on Halloween night. Very nice. Uh, originally, we all got involved with Halloween on these two islands. We were all into it, and then the Reformation happened, mm. and it was originally about uh, praying for the souls of your departed. Yeah, that had gone to the waiting room of the afterlife. But Protestants don't have the waiting room for the afterlife. Yeah. You either go in there or you don't go in there. Right. So that that all died off, except so Halloween carried on in Catholic Ireland. Yeah. Or Catholic Highlands of Scotland. Yeah. So that was it, except for weird little pockets around England that still survives. There's a Punky Night yeah. in a couple of villages in Somerset. Mm -hmm. There's Souling. Yeah. With, again, it's going around houses with the cake in, in Cheshire yeah. and North Wales. And there's a uh, guising mm -hmm. where you dress up, you know, in masks and yeah. whatnot in, in the moors above Sheffield. Good grief. Yeah, this is like so the yeah, shipping so report of Halloween. Yeah. He, know, he knows, he knows that that's the, what I love about Maxwell is that he's going to look, he's going to invest in, into anything. He's going to go unbelievably deep, which but is what's good. So this is ostensibly like, uh, uh, this is a Western European equivalent of uh, Dia de los Muertos. All, no all Northern Europe originally was uh, all Northern Europe and it's, it is the seasonal change from autumn into winter. You know, you didn't know whether you were going to live or die. Yeah. So it, it was a lot of us divining, you know. Uh, you is, know. It, is it around a similar time of the year to the Day of the Dead in Mexico? 
I don't know when that is. I think there you go. There's I the window it, in your it, Halloween it, it thing. May, may be springtime because yeah. it may weirdly May and October are the same. That's Cinco de Mayo. That's what you're thinking of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when I was a little kid, I lived in the Yukon. Ah. Uh, and you know that trend um, for uh, for women. Uh, it's not so much now. They've kind of uh, righted the ship, but uh, where it was, every costume had to be sexy. You know, yes, and it was, was a, it's a yeah. horrible mm. thing. Women should just mm -hmm. uh, women shouldn't feel the pressure to do that. But in the Yukon, it was the same with everybody, but it was um cold weather wear. Mm. You know, because you really couldn't go trick or treating in the Yukon <laughs> in late October. So it was always well, what would a snowmobiler dress up as this year? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Put a little crown on. He's Come a on. snowmobiling king. Once again, yeah, yeah you, you're Halloween in the Yukon. It's 900 sexy Eskimos. Halloween in yeah. the Yukon. <laughs> Inuit, first memoir. Inuit, yeah. don't say that. I know <laughs> <laughs> I, I, the chance to offend is probably very low right now in the Galway. But, I would uh, imagine. I would imagine. My yes. brother uh, married a Chippewan woman this year yes. in uh, the Northwest Territories. So I'm, And he's now Did impregnated, you, uh, that woman. And so I'm very oversensitive, possibly. Good Lord. And uh, and let's and let's, if we may, uh, um, uh, was there a was it an uh, was it an Inuit ceremony? The, the uh, it was it? half half. Uh, oh, wow. And, what's what's uh, an Inuit wedding like? When's the next time? Well, they're not Inuit. Uh, uh, Chippewans yeah. are yeah. natives um, right. or uh, First Nations. But there there is a difference between um, the uh, the the people that lived far north and then uh, the people that sort of migrated back and forth. And yeah, she, yeah. Chippewan is. Um, is the, the the more southern um but uh what's their game though what happens in one of their ceremonies mm. uh a lot of uh well it was just like it was like a, a christian sort of ceremony with a with a pastor or i don't even know if she i don't know, I don't know if she was ordained but it was very wedney and then uh her mother got up and did a like a, a sort of sun dance kind of thing and then yeah. yelped to the sky it was cool oh man yeah, that was great. And in a uh, in a um, strike against racism, the drunkest guy at the wedding was a white guy from Alberta. So oh, God bless him. Yay. Yeah. Good. It's because my uh, somebody my, has to do it. That's right. My Troy. grandfather was from uh, was 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 Russian, and he had a Russian Orthodox funeral, and that was I just like going to alternate versions of things that you used to go to. Russian Orthodox funerals are long. There's a lot of chanting. Oh, there is, is a lot of singing, and it's way mournful. Wow. Well, our, our Christian I'm, brethren uh, from the east, they love a bit of smells and bells. Mm. On my it's all about this, you know. There's a lot of that. There's mm. a lot of incense. Yeah. On my Estonian side, uh, I was going through uh, old pictures, and there uh, there was uh, a funeral photo. It's like the same way you'd have a wedding photo, but yeah. there was just like an old black and white with a dead guy, and then everyone leaning in with a somber look wow. on their face. That is, is which is very odd. This is my father, uh, uh, my dad, of course. Uh, he, um, you know, uh, uh, he was taking pictures at Granddad's funeral. It's, 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 my dad is the only member of our family I know that does that. It gets the camera out of the funeral. It's European side. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I think. Yeah, he, I think that's when they're at their happiest. In fact, one time I remember yeah. being in a cortege behind. I was in the. In, I was in the limo behind him, and he actually leant out of the window of his <laughs> of his and took pictures of the hearse as it was in front of him driving along. It was oh, he's a blitz. That's a stylish man, shot, Jupiter. That's quite. It looked really good. Hey, we're going to continue talking with Mr. Andrew Maxwell, Glenmore, Grunty McGuire is going to be joining us in the studio very shortly indeed. Uh, the yeah, Phil Jupiter sitting in for Keith Finnegan here on Galway Bay FM. Uh, my guest uh, still with me in the studio, Mr. Andrew Maxwell. Say hello, Andrew. Morning. Glenn Wall, say hello. hello. And joining uh, joining the hexagonal table of doom here in the studio, Gronia Maguire. How are you, lady? I am doing well. Uh, yeah, so, uh, you, the, the very interesting thing we were talking about last night before you went on stage at the Spiegel tent is is how, you know, as when you gig in London, you're able to go on stage and start with a... Hey, I'm Irish and kind of, you know, and, and, and go from that perspective of being an Irish woman in London and uh, th that's your normal opener, isn't it? And, and you were talking about how that wouldn't really fly in Ireland. No, it's less of a novelty over here. <laughs> how, d how, did you, how does one redress that? You know, how do you think about kind of being in front of your people once more? It's weird. I think it's because it's not like when I'm in London, I don't like doing the whole, well, in Ireland mm. we do this and mm. blah, blah, blah. But it's genuinely like if, you do, if you're in front of a crowd, if you don't address the 
fact that you're Irish, it's like they get really confused. Like, doesn't she realise she's Irish? She hasn't <laughs> mentioned the fact that she's Irish. So you kind of just have to have like a little joke just at the top to s establish, I am Irish, I'm aware that I'm Irish, it's going to be okay, and then sort of move on to more interesting stuff. Be almost just get into a habit of sort of saying that at the top of your set. It, I, I mean, it's a, but that's, here's the thing, is, is, is all four of us here, is the craft we do. The, the, the opening, it was, it was very interesting because backstage last night as well, Glenn Wall, you were talking about the fact that you can't wander on stage and start with a seven minute bit from the middle of your act and just kind of plough straight into, oh, you know what it's, bang, you, you have to have a, a starting point. You gotta gain their trust. Uh, and, and the yeah, that's job. it. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is, this is the thing. Whereas you, Maxwell, you went on last night and you abused them from the get-go. You, <laughs> you, 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 you said something did. foul about the people who yeah, got away. they knew what they deserved. <laughs> they, knew, they knew what they were getting. I've always found in Europe, too, if I don't address the fact that I'm Canadian and go into my cleverer stuff, they... They think I'm American, and they don't think I get my own jokes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, he lucked out on that one again, but I don't think he understands this at all. So, you know, like as if Americans are, are total morons, but of course they're not. Mm. It's the richest, most powerful empire in the history of humanity. Mm. There's lots of well, you've, ones, you've never driven down the back roads of America. <laughs> <That's> not true. <laughs> yeah, that's this, the, this is the people that got a passport. Well, yeah, man. Like I've, I've traveled all over the world the last five years, and I've never seen poverty like the back roads of America. Like just, just defeated people, and like, like the the difference is the poor people in India smile. Like almost bigger smiles than the rich people, but yeah. that's that's not the case in America. It's, uh, it's, it's an extraordinary thing that I found with America when I sort of drove around it m myself, particularly uh, um, did, did the Route 66 drive, which ostensibly doesn't really exist anymore because it's been replaced by a, by a bigger highway. And it's and it just strikes me that what has caused the poverty in America, aside from you know the, is the disparate, you know the the divide between rich and poor, but is the unfettered kind of uh, rampaging development of, of corporate America. It's just, there's no kind of, wait, well, if you do this, what will happen there? Basically, they moved a road, a massive road, a mile north of the old Route 66, which just destroyed hundreds of communities. And no, that appears not to have been factored in to the building of, of I-40, is it? The, yeah, the cross yeah, state yeah. One? and now anything on Route 66 is just, you know, hey, we're Route 66! Like, it's, a, like it, yeah. it's a thousand Route 66 diners. Yeah. So there's, a, there's, not even anywhere, there's not even any reason to go to it other than... You know, like I'd I'd rather see uh, like uh, Grapes of Wrath diners or you know yeah. some like you know that that was the heartland the, uh, that was the the vein across America. Yeah. That, yeah. Would just be, killed it. that would be a grim chain of restaurants, wouldn't it? A big Grapes of Wrath themed restaurants. <laughs> <laughs> you, know what? you know what? Anytime I see stuff like that, like uh, Walking Dead or Grapes of Wrath, like just like society has crumbled. I always get hungry. Like I'm like, well, I gotta eat now. I mean, there could be a zombie apocalypse, and then I'll think of the time I could have got a Waffle. bucket of chicken. Just yeah. you know, I could just could have walked out and got a bucket of chicken. Better get a bucket of chicken right up. <laughs> um, hey, uh, Glenn, you we and again we were just uh, chatting in the interval there, and, and this is something of an un uh, clunky segue but i'm going to uh, risk it anyway an album you're making an album are you doing uh it's about to be released uh november 18th it's called no lands man it's my edinburgh show from uh three years ago uh but the interesting thing about that is that on november 2nd asif manvi from uh the daily show indeed so yeah he's releasing a book called no lands man and uh i i've contacted my uh my agent going you know he's releasing a book the same title as my show and his agent has come back and go we need more information and i'm like well i'm not google yeah, yeah. google it like yeah. you know that's three years ago good grief uh, yeah like like I, and I, I was always good natured go you know like i know it's a mistake but you know let's we, we could do some cross promotion or anything and just to have a come back go wow well, you know we're, we're, can we prove this? It's not 1942. Yeah, I can prove it. You know, yeah. like just you just type your show title into Google and see what comes up. Yeah, so, um, I don't I don't know what to do about this now. Like I, I know that. Let's fight them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know, but we do. Yeah. Let's take every every stout man the west of the Shannon and we'll we'll ride on horses to his hmm. house. Yeah. Not not good horses like ponies in there. <laughs> You know, not quality horses, like, but we'll get there on horseback. It's a typical Maxwell response to the to the situation. <laughs> Can you take horses on the ferry? 
A ferry to America. We get a ferry to America. I love the idea that there's a ferry. Yeah, no, he's from no. Ferry. Here's the other thing. He's from Bradford, so he should know better. I could see if he was American, but he's ah, not. He's from Bradford. Is he really? How yeah. long has he been in the States then? When did he come? I don't know. I don't know. I, I because know I was that. watching uh, his. Um, I was watching the promo for the book where he interviews uh, John Oliver and tells him how English he is, and John's like, "You're not English." John Oliver, who with Daniel Kitson came to see that show in 2012 and should have known better and should have told him, but. Um, the, yeah, the timeline's all there, and uh, he he should know better than to tell his agent. Oh, well, you know, we'll people see. from Bradford, what are you going to do? Uh, there it's we a go. little town. You see, uh, it's now, the light shift, you now see. what I've got, now what I've got is I've got an upset guest. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, I'm, I'm sure you've got an upset Galway right now. <laughs> you've just heard this <laughs> shocking news. About I, dare, I dare say that many of the people who go with it, they bump into you in the street, and they, you know, they'll go, Glenn, come over here, and they'll whack it, you know, they'll... You know they'll they'll, they'll pop it. They'll, they'll take you for a pint. They'll give you some counsel. Mm. So hard. They'll yeah. give you some sound advice. The amount of tables that are turned over right now, yeah. all across oh, the Greater Galway. They're upset area. And, and, and rightly so. Chessboards asunder. Yeah. Nothing gets Galway people angrier than um, intellectual copyright infringement. I know. So they're when heavy. they hear no, this, they're and heavy. the uh, the people from the other Galway in Ireland, <laughs> it's, it seems it seems like a piffling thing, but it's not. <laughs> It's, it's basic manners and decorum. Yeah. You know? No, it's Google, and it's the easiest thing in the world. And, you know? and then, and then like, to be shown it and then go, well, uh, how, how am I expected to have access to this World Wide Web that could have told me in a second? I need him to prove more. No. Yeah. Decorum, that's what I'm Poor talking Poor form, about. Asif, Fair. and I know you're listening, in mm. your hut in Galway. <laughs> Fair play and decency, that's what I'm in favour of. Yeah. You know? If you if no. you're ripping or you rip off the the title of another man's show, what else would you do? It's a bit like I always I was always what a little puzzled by when when Hollywood would like bring out a meteor film. There'd be another meteor film almost immediately, and oh, they'd, yeah. all, they'd always start bickering over who was first. It was like Deep Impact and the other one Armageddon. You know, Armageddon. Mm. Two meteor films. There were two volcano films came out at the same there, time. I, I, I distinctly remember there was two uh, Robin Hood films. Two Robin Hood films. Back I, to I was my personal favourite was uh, when uh, the man switched bodies with the boy, and that happened like 19 times. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, vice versa. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There was and, an and everybody, of those. like yeah. nobody could get enough of it either. Like, yeah, well, I like Big, so I'll go see it again with different actors. Freaky I, I like Kirk Cameron and I like Dudley Moore, and I wish they were in Big. So yeah. I'll go see it. Yeah, we had Freaky Friday. Freaky Friday. Freaky Friday. Which was, yeah, which was a long time. That, that was the Soul first man. one. The, the original one, which was with a young uh, Jodie Foster, wasn't mm. it? Yeah, yeah. Soul <laughs> Man. The extraordinary idea of a white guy in a black guy's skin to get into Harvard. Yeah, to get it yeah. <laughs> Strong. Yeah, really, really nice message to uh, all the black people across America. <laughs> the only reason you're in there. I would ask all of you to plug your forthcoming shows here at. Uh, at I'd the, like to uh, plug Asif Mandy's, Mandy's book. Do not <laughs> plug Asif's book unless you can get a reciprocal guarantee that he's plugging your <laughs> album. Uh, your shows, Max, I'm looking at you. To, the, I know. His, I his know, eyes are getting bigger and bigger because he knows I'm going to ask him times and dates. Tonight. Which tonight. you can't do it. You are, you are on tonight, dear boy. You definitely are, because I can see your name here somewhere. I will yeah. be in the Spiegel tent uh, down the abandoned docks. There you go, at 7 o'clock in the Spiegel tent. Uh, Mr. Uh, Glenmore, you're on in the Spiegel I tent will at 9.30. Be, uh, and I'll be perusing Asif's book to find any funny stories I can tell from it. There you go. What if his, his book is all about being Canadian? How do you feel then? I wouldn't doubt it. <laughs> I, I, I don't put anything past this guy. He's hey, uh, uh, Grunny, you've got any more shows? So coming? I'm doing a show uh, tonight. Yep. Doors at half ten. Starts at eleven with Carl Spain at the Roisin Dove. Marvelous stuff. So that's so that's the late night carnival yes. at the Roisin Dove, which very sadly clashes with me DJing myself and uh, Googie are going to be doing the Magnificent Sevens. We're doing a DJ set between eleven and two in the morning, all on vinyl. So when you're done oh with your show, goodness. nip I on downstairs. Was, I thought it was going to be samurai music. Oh, sorry. Are you upset? That it was just, <laughs> just, just Oh, it's, that's a seven-inch pun. No. It's just us <laughs> playing seven-inch singles. It's going to be absolutely car crashy. Uh, thank you all very much indeed for coming in. Don't forget tonight, um, uh, Arthur Smith sings Leonard Cohen. That's my hot ticket uh, for tonight. Also, Dave Bedell in fame, not the musical. That's on as well. There's a, an embarrassment of riches and richness of embarrassments. That is the way that the uh, Vodafone Comedy Carnival <laughs> hallway always works. Uh, uh, Arthur Smith sings Leonard Cohen at 9.30. You will see me lurking around at that gig before I go off and I'll be in a very, very good tray suit. I warn all of Galway oh, really? now. 
I'm going to look quite the clown. It's going to be hideous beyond measure. Um, uh, thanks very much indeed. Jason, the engineer, all of the camera people here, Tracy for sorting out, Kev Healy. Uh, thanks to Keith Finnegan for lending me his show. Uh, these are words that I like to say at the end of a broadcast. This is William Shatner. Thank you.